Hi, today we are going to discuss about Zscaler CASP API based box integrations. Zscaler has inline CASP and API based CASP. API based CASP is predominantly uh, call it as out of band CASP. So, in out of band CASP, a Zscaler platform, zero trust platform will uh, integrate it with your uh, SaaS tenant. In our case, we are going to discuss around box integration and API queries are made by your Zscaler application towards the box and certain actions can be taken place. For example, in box, you can detect the malwares and do um, inspect DLP policies on your box and your box uh, file sharing file or your files which are available in the box will take appropriate actions. It may be uh, the files are uh, ma made to read only or the sharing will be disabled or box classification will be enforced towards the uh, uh, files which are available in the box. Likewise, there are plenty of uh, capabilities around the back box and Zscaler uh, platforms. Let's jump in and quickly see the capabilities and the configuration options available in Zscaler. So here in the help portal, you could see uh, certain uh, articles which help you to decide what kind of applications you wanted to integrate. All say, sanctioned SaaS-based applications can be integrated into um, a Zscaler. So Zscaler have a complete list over here. When you see here, you could see the complete list which are aware, uh, supported as of now. Right. So when you go with the uh, box, so when you do this box integration, you can have the capabilities of API DLP policy and uh, malware detection and scan configurations. So very first step is you need to go to administration and SaaS application tenants and define the application tenants uh, which is uh, required for you. So I have already integrated with box. So you could see the box is already integrated and the status is active. Let me quickly showcase you how we can configure it. You can uh, click add uh, SaaS applications and you can select the box and put a name. So you can put any name which you would like to um, call it on. So you can put, use uh, I, the name and after that uh, copy this uh, content then go to the box settings uh, you can log in with your uh, administrative credentials and click next go to apps and custom app manager, you can select the custom app. So in our cases, we are uh, configured Zscaler SaaS tenant. So when you click add app, it will ask you to enter the client ID. The client ID you are downloaded from or copied from the Zscaler tenant and you can put that client ID and click, click next. So once you click next, it will showcase you the details and you can click uh, authorize option. So these are the application scopes can be modified by Zscaler. So these uh, many application scores will be authorized by the box and you can get those uh, access to it for you. So uh, I can just click view and we can see the detailed information like uh, admin can make calls because of users, can calls because of users and also generate user access tokens so and so, right? So these uh, options are provided. Then uh, you got to go to account and billing and uh, when you go to account and billing you could see the enterprise society somewhere here uh, yeah this is the enterprise society you can copy this enterprise society and paste this enterprise society over here once you save this configuration you will be able to uh, see that uh, a tenant status in the list and the status will be active if that uh, that validation is completed Okay. Let me click here and it will showcase you uh, the details. 
like a, a SAS connector and then box enterprises ID are configured here, right? So now the next step is go to policy and under the SAS uh, security API, you have certain configuration. Um, this is a security posture control. Security posture control is available only for these particular tenants. So we don't have anything over there. We can go to security API controls. There are two major configurations. One is DLP, another one is malware detection. Okay, I have uh, three DLP policies. One is uh, uh, talking about uh, collaboration scope, external collaborations, external view and edit. The action will be um, changed to read only external collaborators and severity is medium, right? And the second policy is talking about all collaborations and uh, uh, there is an engine company restricted data so if it is if this particular engine kick in you, your actions will be report the incident only and the severity is high the third one is i'm talking about uh, um, test dlp engine expression is the dlp engine if that is matched remove the sharing so this is also uh, for all the collaborations. So there are two kind of collaborators. One is external, another one is internal collaborators. So everybody, uh, every actions will be, uh, uh, these actions will be applied for uh, all the scope which is available in the collaboration list. And the actions are remote sharing, severity is high, right? These are the three policies I have written for DLP and you have an option to, do exceptions and um, there is no exceptions added here and malware detection you can create a malware detection policy something like this um, remove malware will be the action and uh, detection will be enabled okay and the scanning exceptions still you can put some scanning exceptions to you and also you can go to the scan configuration and uh, create the scan configuration for box so let me stop this uh, for you and showcase you what I have written here. Here you could see um, it says tenant application, select that application and the policy which are applicable for those uh, uh, tenant and data to be scanned. It's new data only or data created or modified after a specific uh, date, you can do the scanning, right? I have selected all and uh, start the scanning. Now I have, I'm going to, uh, the going through the box and let's see how this can be achieved. So for example, here there are multiple application. I'm not, uh, not gonna modify anything. Let me create a new folder. Um, or let me add my entries into the my box notes. Uh, so nothing is there here. I'm just uh, gonna uh, copy these contents. I'm going to paste that content into the box. So the box, all the uh, entries are downloaded. Here you could see two exe files, which is for malware inspection, and you have some uh, text files as well. So these files are used for performing the DLP actions. Now I'm gonna share these uh, files. Um, to an external collaborator. So external collaborator for my case is uh, uh, from live.com. Okay, and I'm making this as a editor. For all, I'm making this as editor so that you can see what exactly is happening after uh, the policy is enforced. Like I said, AP based is not a real time. So it's a near real time or it's more than that. It will take some more time to do the investigation, scanning and do the investigation and DLP and malware protection policies. So here also I'm making as an editor uh, and also I'm gonna do the sharing for the last file as well. So all files are made as uh, collaborative uh, towards uh, live.com um, user and yeah. Uh, 
so let me create a shared shared file as well so here also i'm creating shared files okay so now we can go to the uh, portal and analytics web insights and you can do some scanning over a period of time you could see some kind of data here let's wait for some time to start the scanning now you could see some logs are showing here and if you want to see the detailed you can go to view logs and you can see the detailed information about this uh, scanning so here there are multiple uh, scanning are done and the actions are showcased as no action and you could see change to read only and uh, remove sharing remove sharing and remove sharing right let's go to box and see what exactly is happened now so here the sharing and the uh, right access is now there right you can just uh, refresh the page and uh, see the status still it is saying like a sharing link is there and you could see the files are there let's wait for some more time otherwise you can go back and come to that particular file one more time yeah there is uh, no changes so far let's wait for some more time now you have received more logs let's go to uh, view logs and see what uh, kind of data is having us of now so you can use the tenant which uh, generating this log this mss lab is box one so you can go here and uh, you can put a uh, instant type application showing us box and also you can see uh, logs over here okay so here you could see certain logs are generated so here uh, there is an action column so where you could see um, change to read only, remove sharing, remove sharing, and read only, read only, so on, so right. So these are the set of actions that are taken place under the box based on the file types and uh, based on the DLP engines, which triggered uh, on the DLP policies. Okay, you could see the malware. So yeah, here you could see the credit card and other card, company restricted data. These are the DLP dictionaries which are triggered. And yeah. Okay, now you have uh, another area uh, under analytics. You can go to uh, SAS security reports under assets. You can see the list of uh, uh, SAS asset report. Like uh, I'm choosing file sharing. Under file sharing, I have a box application where you could see in the current day, it is current date. And uh, I could see eight files uh, with instance are matched in the rule. Six are fall under DLP, six are under malware. The three files are externally shared. So let's uh, go to the box and see the actions. So in this folder, there was two exe files. Those are removed now. And also let's refresh this and see what exactly happened others. Yeah, this is, uh, okay, I'm not uh, I'm gonna see that file. I'm just gonna edit, see the sharing status. Uh, under collaborators, earlier it was selected as editor. Now it's showing us Weaver. And you can go here. And uh, so this one, it's saying, uh, yeah, this is also Weaver. Let's see uh, the configurations one more time. So you have uh, three policies over here. One policy is talking about external collaborators and the DLP engine is company restricted, uh, then change to read only. So uh, for external collaborators, this has happened. And for this one is company restricted. Since these are two are overlapping, any one will kick in. So report instant will not come into picture. And the third one is uh, uh, text DLP engine expression match. And this is uh, uh, remove sharing. So let's see if this action is taking place or not.
So now you could see this sharing option is this vanished uh, under the test TLP one, two, three file. And you couldn't see the sharing options because we have chosen us remove sharing for the files which are matching under this DLP engine, right? Yeah, so one more thing you can uh, see here under analytics and uh, uh, says security report and assets that the malware files are identified and those files are banished from here as well. And also alerts and activities, you could see certain alerts information. For an example, um, I triggered one alert, which is saying like impossible to travel. So um, yesterday I was logged in from the location Chennai. Today I'm logging or some way, uh, sorry, today, oh uh, yeah, yesterday itself I was logged in from Chennai after some time I was logged in from uh, Frankfurt. So this is because I have connected some um, uh, client connectors uh, to validate certain things. So during that time, the impossible to travel alert has been triggered, right? So there are other alerts as well. So when you go to policy under uh, security API controls, you have seen a, a module called activity alerts. These are the set of alerts which can be also generated uh, when any operations fall under this. So it's the bulk upload, failing, failing login, and also downloads will be detected and notify you. That's it today. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.